بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومن عجم ثم الرضا عن أبي بكر وعن عمر وعن علي وعن أثمان ذي الكرم يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله most honorable viewers and listeners, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're watching books, Dars e Quran. Insha'Allah ta'ala, today I will be um, covering selected verses from the 8th Juz. I'm your host, Muhammad Nabid Ashrafi. Uh, in the concluding verses of Surah Al An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He instructs the Muslims many commands injunctions are given to the Muslims some of which that you should eat though that meat upon which has been recited the name of Allah and not to eat and consume that meat upon which the name of Allah has not been recited meaning if a person forgot to say it then that meat would still be halal but if it's deliberately uh, left out bismillah allah akbar is not said then that meat is haram it cannot be consumed nor can it be consumed if it has been slaughtered in the name of someone besides god at the time of slaughtering if it is slaughtered in the name of someone besides god and then once again it is uh, impermissible to consume that meat it will be haram but there is a difference between this kind of meat and that meat which we have uh, allocated or set aside for a purpose like akika so this is the akika for such a child or this is the qurbani etc so if we say that this uh, goat is for the langar of uh, sheikh abdul qadir jilani radiyallahu an etc uh, then there is nothing wrong that will not make that meat unsuitable for consumption what it means is that when you are slaughtering the meat then bismillah allahu akbar are the only words that can be said further in verse number 125 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions the importance of the person who is guided and that there is no greater treasure than being upon guidance in this verse, it is mentioned, فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ وَمَنْ يُرِدْ أَنْ يُدِلَّهُ يَجْعَلْ صَدْرَهُ دَيِّكًا حَرَجًا كَأَنَّمَا يَسَّعَدُ فِي السَّمَاءِ That whoever Allah wishes to show the way, He opens His heart for Islam. And whoever wishes to lose His way, meaning He makes His heart narrow, constricted, well, as if he is, as though he is climbing up into the sky. It is reported in the hadith that by opening the breast, what is meant by that? That light and nur which is placed in the breast of a believer, in the chest of a believer, which enables the heart to be receptive for faith. So, Iman is that special light which enters the heart of a believer and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables that heart to be receptive of that light. 
So it is the ultimate blessing and gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It cannot be achieved without tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are three signs of those. Dislike for the world, meaning a person whose heart has become receptive for iman, for faith. Then that person, there are three signs of that, of that person. First, that person will have dislike for the world. Dislike for the world, incline, inclination towards the hereafter. The person will be inclined and inspired more towards doing things for the hereafter, for the akhirah, which is everlasting, which is permanent, and this world is temporary. And as mentioned in the hadith, the mafhum of a hadith, that it is a bitter lie. Whereas the akhirah is the sweet. It, it is a, the, the world is a sweet lie, whereas the akhirah is a bitter truth. The mafhum of a hadith. So what happens is most people, they fall and become entrapped in the sweet lie and fail to see the bitter truth. So the person becomes inclined towards the hereafter, the one who has been blessed and his heart has been opened up for the reception of the light of faith and preparation for death before it comes. He, that person is blessed with that, that he becomes, uh, he engages in doing things which are for the Akhirah, preparing for the Akhirah. So this verse, it uh, enlightens us with the fact that it is faith is obtained through divine guidance without divine guidance without the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one is unable to become a mu'min a believer and to uh, uh, others who whose hearts have become narrowed constricted then religious work begins to seem burdensome for such people while worldly affairs, they feel light and easy. So tightness is the sign of the chest. And a tight chest means causes of infidelity begin to gather in that chest. And that person is, as a result, unable to provide motives for faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, He uh, highlights the importance of the sirat mustaqim in the subsequent verse. And says, وَهَذَا سِرَاتُ رَبِّكَ Mustaqima, and this path of your Rabb is straight. And we have explained the signs in detail for the people accepting admonition. Qad ayati li and the straight path is the path, meaning of your Lord means it is the path of the Quran or the path which has the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam which will enable one to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with ease. Just as a straight road takes you to your destination with ease, which is free from bends, twists and turns. So this is for all people to follow. Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions the other commands and injunctions which uh, through the words of through the sacred tongue of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam he says oh beloved declare to the people of the book as the people of the book they were rejecting the messages of revelation of their scriptures and Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa sallam was instructed by Allah Azza wa Jal in verse number 151 to declare that Ta'alu ihsana that come I shall read out to you what your Lord has forbidden to you because they were denying it the Prophet said come he's instructed by Allah to declare he says come I shall read out to you what has been declared as haram by your Rabb upon you and what is that? Allah to shiriku shay'an. That you will not make partners with Allah in anything. You will not make anything 
a partner with Allah. And that you do good to your parents. And that you do not slay your children out of poverty. We are your sustainer. We will provide you with the risk. And them. And do not even approach shamelessness, shameful deeds. Whatever is in the open and whatever is hidden. Keep away from that. And do not kill unjustly. Do not kill unjustly. And that has been ordered, meaning this has been ordered to you so that you may understand. This verse explains to us that our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not just a scholar of the Quran Majid of Islam, but he was also fully aware and learned of the previous scriptures. How did he achieve this? He was not taught by any person. His teacher is Allah Azza wa Jal himself and he enlightened him with this knowledge. This is why he was able to deliver to them the contents of their book. In verse number 152, the Prophet wasallam continues and says that do not come, more injunctions are given. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَا لَلْيَتِيمِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَا أَحْسَنُ حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّةً and that do not even approach the property of the orphans but in the best way until he reaches maturity and maintain the measure and the weight justly meaning when you weigh then you should weigh justly and these rules are applicable even today and they will be applicable until judgment day to all Muslims and no person has been overburdened, meaning we burden no soul except to its capacity. And this is something which we fail to understand even today. And we start to say words of complaint. We utter words of complaint blasphemously and say that uh, Allah has overburdened such a such a person. He, he is overburdened. I am overburdened. I am doing things more than I can take, etc. But the Quran it refutes this and says that no person is burdened more than his capacity. And when you speak, speak, وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَعْدِلُوا Then be just in your speak, speech. وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَ Even if it is concerning your relative. Meaning you should not become biased, you should not become prejudiced when you are referring to matters which relate to yourself or to your relatives and fulfill your covenant with Allah the promises that you make with Allah the oaths that you take you should always fulfill them and this has been <coughs> enjoined to you so that perhaps you may be admonished <coughs> so these are rulings that have been made for us Muslims commands and injunctions the Quran is full of, full of these commands and injunctions which apply to us which we should be observing in our daily lives and application and implementation of the commands and injunctions of the Quran of Majid make us into a good Muslim as the great Allama Iqbal has said in his poetry, wo muazzaz the zamane mein musalman ho kar. Wo muazzaz the zamane mein musalman ho kar. That they were honorable, dignified. In their era, how? As they were Muslims. Ham khar huye tare ke Quran ho kar. And we have become disgraced by abandoning the Quran, by leaving the Quran. So implementation of the commands and injunctions, observing the commands and injunctions of the Quran, 
complying with the commands and distancing ourselves and <clears throat> observing the prohibitions makes a person into a Muslim. Not just to verbally recite the Kalima Tayyiba and then not to live in accordance with the demands of the Kalima Tayyiba. One must be observing the rulings, the commands and injunctions of the Quran to be a complete believer, to be a Muslim. And if a person abandons the teachings of the Quran, the commands and injunctions, then he will undoubtedly, this will be a cause of his disgrace and humiliation. Respectable viewers and listeners, stay with us. I'll be right back after the break. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> شهر 